Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens of Once Upon a Game, and today we're going to do a quick unboxing of the recently released Thunder in the Ozarks, the Battle of Pea Ridge, March 1862. It's from Revolution Games, uh, designed by Herman Lutman, developed by Fred Monzo, uh, graphics Rick Barber and Charles Kibler. Uh, this is the second in the Blind Swords system. Uh, first, the first released uh, game, of course, was Stonewall Sword. Um, which uh, was the Battle of Cedar Mountain, um, and the it's kind of been a big news weekend for the uh, Blind Sword system as the uh, I guess the first design, technically the third to be scheduled for release, was Hammer and Sickles, uh, which is the second uh, I can believe the second day of Gettysburg, um, and that was on GMT's P five hundred rocketed. Uh, you know, making the cut easily, um, and then just kind of stalled out over there. So uh, uh, Herman asked for it to be released to him. It's been released to him. It's now been immediately picked up by Revolution. So the good news is that the uh, trio of games, and hopefully more to come, will be all in the uh, same design style, which has been excellent so far. I love the, the map and Stonewall Sword uh, by Rick Barber and the art that goes with it. It's very... Um, uh, Periodic feel, you know, evokes the feel of, of, of maps from that time. Um, it's very nice. So, anyway, I uh, got a copy in of this. It's the boxed version. The Stonewall Sword was a folio edition, uh, which I put into a uh, small candy box. But this comes in its own box. It's a pretty uh, decent sized box here, about, I guess, an inch and a quarter. It's you know, standard size box. You know, the dice kind of moving around in there. Um, as you have a big picture of the uh, the map, some of the counters. Um, but we'll just take a look at what's inside. We'll do you know a whole review and all that kind of stuff later, just so you know what you're getting. Uh, it's a pretty good box. It came uh, unsealed, so we're not actually going to you know break any shrink wrap here. It was already uh, already un, uh, unshrunk, as it were. So let's see what we got. The aforementioned dice, which we heard moving, and as always, oh snake eyes. That was a that was a good roll. Right. All right, so we have the what would in the folio would be the title page, um, but on the oh, okay on the back is your uh, turn chart, March seventh through March seventh through eighth. So we're we're working in uh, half hour increments here. I believe uh, Stonewall Sword was in twenty minute. Uh, increments. You got a victory point track. You got a broken track. One thing I like about uh, I like about Stonewall Sword with this is uh, when units are removed or broken from the field of battle, they come into the broken box and they advance each turn, and then they come back on. Possibly be available to come back. They will be available, but possibly will come back into the game um, after they regroup. So that's a that's a great system. Uh, apparently, Van Dorn. I don't know much about this battle. Van Dorn gets sick. Uh, he's disabled, sick, he improves, he's recuperating, and he takes command. Um, so one of the things, great things about war games is you learn about history. So I don't know much much about Pea Ridge. I played it once in uh, Cross Five Aprils and enjoyed it. So, all right. Looks like we've got a couple of uh, reference cards. And these are the same, I do believe. So there's two, one for each player, or one for... You know, solo player to have always out front and back. Sorry, my hands are not functioning very well. So here we go. I guess they are identical. There's your battle uh, combat results table. It's a great system. I really I enjoyed it again in Stonewall Sword. I don't know what, you know, obviously the variances are going to be in this. Uh, it uses combat shifts, it uses. Um, uh, the odds are the strength points, uh, total strength to determine, uh, you know, the results. Um, I need to get the other one back out again and play it. Here's your terrain key. Your uh, contour levels and your height. Now one thing I did do on Stonewall Sword was kind of redo the map to show the terrain a little better. I don't know if any of that's in here or not. I don't believe so. Um, event descriptions, 
Again, some of the events are going to be slightly different, I'm sure, but uh, uh, it's a chip pull game. So you'll put your uh, I think it's brigade chits in the in the cup. Uh, you draw them, and then whichever one is activated for whichever side is the one you use. And occasionally, these events can come out and drastically change uh, what's going on in the game. So that's that's pretty cool, enjoyable. Get a bit of a glare here on this. That light there. Get some of that out of there. Okay, so you got the uh, Confederate event descriptions. You got a Confederate play raid. Here's the sequence of play, terrain effects chart. So again, each player would have their own in this case. The unions have different events. Uh, and I believe you can choose which ones you want to put in there, if I'm remembering it correctly. So not all of them will be available at all times. You'll, you'll pick the ones you possibly want to come out. Um, union play raid. Okay, then we got the counters. They have done, I, I really like the work that Revolution does on their games. Um, we got the, uh, the uh, Confederate and Union counters. Uh, we've got artillery in this one. Uh, yeah, we've got artillery. Uh, in uh, Solo Sword, there's only one cavalry unit for the Union, and it kind of moved all over the place, but. Uh, uh, it looks like we've got some horse heads here, so there must be a cavalry, cavalry, cavalry regiment there. Um, here are the uh, some Confederate uh, event shits. There's some of the Union event shits, so they blend in and they'll go in. So some of these will be on board, and then some of these are your draw chits to determine which ones activate. Um, so I can find an example here. So like here's a car is the, I guess, the general, possibly. Uh, then Dodge, Vandiver. Here's Dodge's units. And uh, here's Vandiver's units. So these will be what's on the board, but when you draw the Vandiver chip, then you can activate Vandiver. So, uh, yeah, so very cool. Counters look great. They are registered almost perfectly. That's great. I mean, they're like really well centered. So, as usual, uh, these uh, these shaken and disrupted counters, there's probably going to be enough of them, but uh, there weren't in uh, uh, Stonewall Sword. I ended up making some that falls on BGG if you need them. Uh, same, they look the same. You just print them out and they're just markers, so it doesn't matter. Got a rule book with this, the Blind Swords uh, system. Um, obviously the introduction is going to be the same. I would think that most of the rules are going to kind of be for the system overall, since this is now the second released game uh, in the series. It is a 24-page book. It is all black and white. Um, and really, there are no there are no pictures at all. So. Uh, you got your you got different scenarios, uh, so that's cool. Um, got reinforcements coming in. Um, let's run up for victory. Victory conditions. Victory determination. And this one I know in Stonewall Sword you were capturing locations. Uh, victory determination. Oh, Union Hex Control. There you go. So the unions control these hexes, they get points, and the Confederates control certain hexes, they get points. So it's kind of covered in the book. So anyway, 24 pages, uh, pretty well written. Uh, I haven't read this one, obviously, but if it's based on the other one. It's well written. We've got some designer notes, uh, so on and so forth. So there we go. And now we get to the map. Now, Stonewall Sword was a single map, 17 by 22. This is two maps, 17 by 22. I'm not sure how they connect. Oh, wow, there's some terrain here. Look at all that terrain. What is that? That is some, some chaos there. Some, some kind of forest. Let's see, it's heavy woods. It's, looks like a bunch of asterisks or heavy woods. So man, getting through those is not gonna be fun. Look, we have a little field. We have Cox's field. They're in the middle of it, so. How much we can see of one of these here. Now these patch looks like they've got a lot of areas cut out of these, cut out of the woods. I'm sure that's all 100% accurate. 
So I believe this one connects like an L. As you see here, you got this black, black area here that's the border and goes around. And I think what happens is this one's gonna connect, it's gonna connect like this. So one map's gonna connect and the other one's gonna go portrait, one's gonna go landscape. Unfortunately, I can't zoom out with this camera right now and show you everything, so. But they're beautiful. Uh, they're definitely, you know, obviously paper, they're flat. Uh, they're gonna need plexi. So this would be the left side. You got Lee's cornfield, Mayfield's cornfield, Orbison's cornfield. So yeah, this is gonna go like this and connect. Uh, there's round top. Um, this is north. So then map's gonna come over and go up this way. So yeah, I just lo I, I love these maps. They're very they're very clear. Now it's gonna maybe interesting to try to figure out terrain. Uh, not terrain, elevation in this one uh, with all this this forest, but I'll know, I'll know that when I play. Um, uh, yeah, not much more to say here. As, you know, this is just an unboxing, but it looks very cool. And also uh, very cool is that I cannot reach it, but I have a second copy of this. So stay tuned on how you can possibly win a copy of this for your very own. And I'll have that information out in the next few days. But so you get uh, two maps, you get two player aid cards, you get a 24 page rule book, one sheet of counters, uh, player aid for each side, terrain and events, two dice and a box. And that is Thunder in the Ozarks, the Battle of Pea Ridge, March 1862 from Revolution Games. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.